how do these problems affect decision making? Well, what they do is trigger certain biases that all of us have within us. These are cognitive biases that make us think in predictably wrong ways. The first one is called confirmation bias. If you look at this picture, this is a touchdown during a U.S. football game between the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks. One referee is signaling a touchdown and the other is signaling no touchdown. Depending on whether you're a Packers or a Seahawks fan, you are readily going to agree with one referee or the other. The confirmation bias is the idea that we seek out evidence that confirms our point of view and ignores information that doesn't support that point of view. In medicine, the best example is of a peptic ulcer disease. About 20 years ago, investigators found that peptic ulcer disease was caused by a bacterium instead of just being due to excess stomach acid. This concept was roundly rejected by most people because it didn't confirm what they already knew, which was that peptic ulcer was an acid problem, not an infection problem. Another type of bias is called availability bias which occurs when recent, memorable, or traumatic information is valued more than other information. Clinicians often have this problem in practice when they have seen a patient who has had a bad side effect from a particular medication. They are likely to never use that medication again. But it also applies specifically to the whole guideline development process, when one's own research findings take precedence over other research. This is really a problem when researchers are involved in actual writing of the guidelines. Another bias is called the Semmelweis reflex, which is the tendency to reject a new idea simply because it doesn't fit into an existing paradigm. Ignat Semmelweis was a physician in Austria in the late 1840s. He tried to promote his, to his colleagues that they could dramatically decrease the risk of maternal death due to sepsis if they simply washed their hands. The problem was that he was advocating this idea 50 years before Pasteur did his whole thing with finding germs. As a result, other physicians had no way to explain to themselves why hand washing would affect mortality, which at that time was attributed to an imbalance of the four humors, black bile, yellow bile, blood, and phlegm. It didn't fit into the current paradigm, so of course they didn't wash their hands. A similar example of this happened to my wife. My wife is a family doctor and is involved in the teaching of integrative medicine, which is what used to be called complementary and alternative medicine. At one time, she talked about something that was fairly far out of the normal medical paradigm. On one of her feedback forms at this talk, somebody gave her very low marks for her presentation and said, quote, I won't believe this crap even if it were true. And that's the Semmelweis reflex. Another common one that we often all talk about in everyday life is what's known as Maslow's hammer, which is, quote, when you hold a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we're limited to the tools that we have, and it's hard for us to use anything else besides those. The next one that we'll talk about is called, with apologies to all French speakers, déformation professionnelle. The English translation of this is called job conditioning. It's the idea that we can become conditioned to look at certain things in a certain way because of our profession. This bias was the central premise of the book and movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. In this story, the main character, played in the movie by Jack Nicholson, it is admitted to a hospital for the criminally insane. The character was sane, a little bit wild, but sane, but was perceived to be insane because everyone expected him to be insane. Similarly, a famous experiment in the 1970s took perfectly normal graduate students and put them into an insane asylum. In this study, called Being Sane in Insane Places, the students were observed as being quite psychotic simply because they acted normal in an anything but normal situation. For example, they took notes on their experience and were labeled as demonstrating obsessive compulsive behavior. So again, when we are looking for something, we tend to see it. 